Welcome. The first of our three-section Introduction to Health Economics for Public Health Practitioners module will provide an introduction to health economics by answering six questions and conclude with a brief discussion of challenges and equity in health economics. The six questions are, what is health economics? Why is health economics important to Canada's health system? What is economic evaluation? How do you conduct an economic evaluation? And here we'll talk about modeling, data sources, appraising evidence, and considering the audience. What is budget impact analysis? And what is health technology assessment? Economics is a social science concerned with the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. It studies how individuals, businesses, governments, and nations make choices about how to allocate resources. There are infinite demands on resources, but there are finite resources. We want to distribute resources effectively and efficiently. We will begin with defining and understanding the field of health economics in broad terms. Health economics is a branch of economics concerned with maximizing health gains given limited resources. Health economics is concerned with issues related to efficiency, effectiveness, value, and behavior in the production and consumption of health and healthcare. Traditional economics theorizes that in an efficient market, buyers and sellers possess perfect information and make decisions that maximize their own utility, ultimately leading to an equilibrium in supply and demand. There are many conditions in the production and distribution of healthcare that make it different from other markets. Health economics is therefore distinct from other fields of economics for many reasons. A seminal paper published by Kenneth Arrow in 1963 entitled Uncertainty and the Welfare Economics of Medical Care was key to defining and describing these distinctions. Such distinctions include uncertainty. There are special economic problems in medical care that are related to the existence of uncertainty in the incidence of disease and the efficacy of treatment. There are problems about availability of information. There is informational asymmetry between patients and providers. Markets usually depend on consumers making decisions that maximize their own utility or welfare, and consumers of healthcare may not have a role in making these choices. Physicians may drive demand and inform choices. There can be a potential for opportunistic behavior. There is a large role of non-market institutions, particularly in healthcare, and these could include not-for-profit organizations and charities. There is both uh, public and private insurance in healthcare, and this may lead to price distortion. There is also altruism, which can affect the behaviors of all participants in healthcare. And there is the existence of restrictions and regulations. An example of a health restriction that differs by jurisdiction is direct to consumer advertising of pharmaceuticals. This is allowed in the US and New Zealand, whereas in Canada, this type of advertising is banned. It is believed that this can lead to inappropriate or unnecessary use. How much information should consumers have about available therapeutic options? For other goods and services, consumers have access to information which allows them to choose a product that maximizes their utility, and that's a fundamental assumption of an efficient market. This is not possible in health, where physicians have particular information not available to consumers and also act as gatekeepers. Health economics includes many fields of study. The Williams plumbing diagram, whose name is due to its resemblance to a network of pipes, summarizes eight fields of study which may all fall under the umbrella of health economics. Health economists may be concerned with the study of what influences health, for example, occupational hazards, education, and income, how we define health and its value, demand and supply of healthcare, microeconomic evaluation, which will be our main area of focus in the next sections. Market equilibrium, for example, prices and wait lists. Planning, budgeting, and monitoring, which includes incentive structures and human resources. And evaluation at a system level, including equity and international comparisons. To summarize what we've discussed so far, health economics is a field of economics, and within this field there are many sub-disciplines. Economic evaluation is a tool commonly used in health systems to inform decision making about resource allocation and will be one of the main focuses of this module. Health technology assessment, abbreviated as HTA, is another focus of this module and is defined as a multidisciplinary process that uses explicit methods to determine the value of a health technology at different points in its life cycle. 
The purpose is to inform decision making in order to promote an equitable, efficient, and high quality health system. Economic evaluations are tools routinely included in HTA, and this diagram shows the relationships between these areas. This concludes Section 1, Part 1. Please proceed to Part 2, Why is Health Economics Important to Canada's Health System?